We've got three questions, three answers. Um, before we have a look at the answers, I want us to all look at the first one together. And regardless of whether the value at the bottom is right or wrong, I think there's a quick, easy way all of us can very simply improve this solution, not add anything to it. There's actually something I reckon we could take away that would make it a little bit clearer. Any suggestions? Yeah, so there's a lot of equal signs there. We need some of it because it is an equation after all. But we've got a few extra ones. Which ones would you like me to maybe remove? Yeah, just these ones over here, right? Now, I, I get why they're there. I think often the first time you start doing maths problems, you're like, well, it's kind of like a substitute for the next step, like an arrow, like, okay, my next step in logic, my next step in logic. And to be fair, you know, we kind of train you to do that because this machine here works by every time you want to go to the next step, you hit that button, right? But when we write it, we really want to be clear that equals means, okay, these two things on either side of this are the same and there's nothing here, okay? So I'm just going to get rid of those. When you have a look at that, what do you think? Are you happy with it? Yeah. Yeah? Um, can you see the way the second lines are written? You've got the plus 7, which gets rid of the 7 here and makes it 12 over there. What was the next thing that happened? What's this about? Division because? Because? You're going to get the x on its own. Okay, we're trying to get that x by himself and he's being multiplied by 3. So you divide by 3 and it's fine. Don't assume it's uh, How can we check that x equals 4 is the answer? How can we check? We can throw it back into the very first line. 3 times 4? 3 times 4 is 12. 12. Take away 7 is 5. Cool. Yay, I can, I can maths even Ooh. this late in the afternoon. Um, what do you think of these guys? Have we got some agreement here? Thumbs up? Yeah? Okay, wonderful. Now what I want you to do, if you've got another colour there, is I want you to circle all of the answers you've got, like this. Like circle this, and this, and this with another colour. And I want you to remember that if what we've asked you to do is solve these equations, then these three things I've circled in black, they are called the solutions. Right? So I want to label them as such. Solutions. When you solve, what you get is the solution. Okay? Now, in the, underneath this heading of simultaneous equations, we're going to look at similar kinds of equations, but they're a bit weird because their solutions are a bit... Well, they're unusual for a reason. I'll show you why in a second. Okay? So here's an example. Now, what I'm doing is, just to make sure we're all on the same page, because just when I had a look around, some of you have nailed this idea, others of you kind of know what process you're going through, but you don't know why it works, and then a few others of you are still confused, so that's fine. If I give you an equation like this, and I asked you to solve it, what would you do if I gave you that? Okay, so for example, I uh, don't write this down. But if you wanted to take a similar approach to what you did over here, you maybe would say, oh, okay, well, I'll subtract one from both sides. Which gives you that. And then what might you do? I've just had a point I get up there. That's fine. Okay, so I, I need something in place of one of the letters, right? Because watch what happens. If I look at this, these are all X's, right? These are all X's. We have a name, not just solve it. But when you've got x on the left-hand side of the equation, what's that called? You did an exercise on this last week. It's the called subject. changing the subject. Very good. So x is now the subject of all these equations. I can make x a subject here as well. I've got to do one more thing. What have I got to do? Divide by 2. Uh, I might as well swap places as well. So that'll give me x over here and y minus 1 on 2. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So yeah. I've changed the subject. But I am no closer to a solution because like, I, x's and y's are still there. I don't have a value for each of those, X right? So it's like, you know, what do I do with <laughs> So what you need is to pick a value, okay? In fact, you can pick a whole bunch of different values and this is what you draw a table for. Do you remember this? Can you, yeah? Do you remember you drawing this? If you haven't, in fact, just under here, just draw this particular table for me. I know you've got a lot of your own ones. How many is going to be enough? Yes. Yeah, that'll work. Now, we draw this table because in our three review 
questions. For each of them, there was one solution and one solution alone, right? X equals four and a half. There's nothing else you can put in here that will make the whole thing work. X equals two, only option. X equals four, the only option. But when you come to this guy, what's the difference between this equation and say this one? There's something additional that appears. There's another letter, right? What's this other guy doing here? There's a Y and there's an X, right? So depending on what Y is or what X is, you can get lots and lots of different solutions. There's not just one. In fact, there's an infinite set of them, okay? So I'm gonna write some of them down. For example, if I said X or equal to negative one, Right? I'm just going to start from negative 1. I'm just going to go add 1 and get lots and lots of different values. If I put in negative 1 into here, you can substitute into this equation. Right? 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And then you add 1, which leaves you with? Negative 3. Hold on. Sorry. Let me write it out. Let me write it out. This is how we're doing this, right? Y equals 2 times negative 1 plus 1. That's negative two plus one. It's negative one. That's negative one. I'm glad we're all convinced. Okay, good. It's Monday. It's it's fine. It's okay. It's been a little while. All right. So now have a look at this, right? You know how I said to you before, this is a solution. This is a solution. This is a solution. Right? This pair of numbers, this is one of the solutions. And it's just one of them. I can think of more. I just have to pick different values. Let's try another one. If I go x equals 0, let's substitute it in again. What are you going to get? Um, 2 times 0, which is 0. You add 1. <laughs> OK, we got it first time this go. OK, good. Right? And I can keep doing this. In fact, I know if I just go up by 1 every single time, you can go ahead and you can crunch the numbers. You should find they go up by two yeah. every time. Okay. You can go ahead and you can test it out. Minus one and one is a two number again. Okay, so shh, stay with me. The first thing I want to point out is, okay, look, I've got heaps of solutions, right? And these five, like here's a solution, here's a solution, every pair is a solution. Um, these five aren't it. There's lots of solutions. I could keep going this way, negative two, negative three, negative four. I could keep counting that way, um, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's even solutions between the solutions, right? Like I could have stuck in x equals a half. What's two times a half? It's one. And plus one gives you two. So a half and two, it's another. So I can keep on doing this forever. But what simultaneous equations does is it says, OK, what if you've got more than just one of these guys? What if you've got, say, two of them? So here's the example of them. Okay. Now, when you were drawing your tables before, you would notice you'd have to get a pair of them, right? A pair of tables. Okay. Now, if I again go for this set of values here, right? Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. That's just chosen by coincidence. If I put in x equals negative 1, have a look. This is where I am now, right? What are you going to get out of this? 4 minus minus 1. Hmm. So if I just substitute it in first, Five. that's me sticking in negative 1. What would you like me to do to both sides now? I should add 1 to both sides, right? Which gives me 5. You okay with that? So, oh, wrong color. Negative 1 for the x and 5, there's a solution. There's 1. Okay? What about if I put in x equals 0? This is just 4. And in fact, it's just going to count down like this if you want to go ahead and test all the values. Now look, this is where the um, money truck comes in, right? You can see that there's an infinite set of solutions for this guy. And there's an infinite set of solutions for this guy, right? But there's one solution that'll solve both of these problems at the same time. It's a bit like, you know, you're trying to pick a bunch of meals. You're like, I have all my favorite foods that when I go to the food court, I'm happy to have. And then you have all your favorite foods that you're happy to have at food court. And there might be only one that makes both of us happy, right? In other words, makes us happy simultaneously. 
right? So you can see there's a solution that's in common between them. And that's all this means, right? Big scary phrase, but you just want to find a solution that works for both of them, right? Um, simultaneous equations are the um, democratic election system of the mathematics world. I want an option that's happy for not just one guy, but for more than one, for lots and lots of them. Usually in our cases, they're two. Okay. Can you do either, does it work with more than one, like seven? Well, let me put it this way, okay? Um, if there are seven people and you go to the food court and you want to agree on what you want to buy, what do you think are the chances that all seven of you will be able to find a single food that all of you are happy eating? What do you think, are there good chances or? Lousy chance. It depends. See, it depends if there's a kebab place. <laughs> it depends on the surface. Well, actually, that's exactly the right answer because <laughs> I could come up with seven that all agree with each other in one spot. But the more you get, the harder it is to have ones that agree. Okay, and there's a nice visual reason why, which I'll get to later this week.